Let's talk about happy stuff with uh, <laughs> Steve Kravitz. Happy, right, Steve? Always, always. Always, always the pinnacle of, uh, of, of optimism. Uh, that, yeah, that, that's me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, that's... Always living the high life. <laughs> well, how are you living in the post-COVID uh, uh, life here? I like it. I like it. It's, it's actually feels a little strange to go in a store and not wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I most of the stores here are still requiring masks. Really? Yeah. Even though they go, well, you know, if you at, at gyms now, I pass my gym, which I never go into, but I pass right. my gym. And there you go. and they, well, they only charge me 15 bucks a month, so why should I go in? Anyway, <laughs> Uh, and they have a sign that says uh, no one will be admitted without a mask unless you can prove you've been vaccinated. Right, 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 right. So, right. you know, this idea that you go into a store here and you have to wear a mask uh, when you've been vaccinated is kind of counterproductive. Right, you know? right, right, uh, right. Uh, there, and secondly, if you want people to get vaccinated, then make it a, a real task if they're not for them to do stuff because they have to put masks on when they go into stores and they have to, you know, whatever. But if you've been vaccinated, give them a nice bonus. And that is you don't have to wear a mask. You know, you, you're right. safe with other people. Don't worry about it. You know. And yeah, I, but then they say that it's that new strain that's coming along. Well, and Well, the new strain is not what they're talking about. They, the new strain, we're protected against the new strain. Right. Okay. Right, Pretty right. much, they figure. Uh, of uh, here, here was the statistic: of all the people that died, okay, in right. oh, the last uh, uh, little while, ninety-nine point five percent of them, okay, were not vaccinated. Is that right? So what does that say? Right, says everything, says volume. Yeah. So no matter about the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Delta variant and things like that, the fact is that, uh, you know, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'm not worried. Yeah. Are you worried? Not really, you know. I mean, uh, I will still wear a mask when I'm in the subway. I'm going on a subway oh, today, yeah. and I'm going to wear a mask. And yeah. I, I wear the mask, basically, because I'm going to hold up a bank. But, uh, no, I wear a mask. Uh, because, uh, by, by the way, by the way, when people do go to hold up banks these days, do they take their mask off? I mean, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. I never understood sunglasses as a disguise. Uh, you know, I, I, I somewhat understand it because you can change a person's appearance by not seeing their eyes. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I, if, you know, if you know someone and they're wearing sunglasses, you know who it is. See, like, do you know who I am now? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, you can't see me because I can't see you. you know, yeah, all right. all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, but uh, uh, so, I, you know, I mean, my feeling is um, that we are in a situation in which if you've been vaccinated, really, you should just be able to do anything you want to do. But you should be be able to prove it, and that's why they should have these passports, you know, these little identifications right. you can put on your phone, or you can show them the card that you've been vaccinated. Right. Um, those are a little less um, accurate because people are on, if you go online, they're selling those cards. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. But if you have to be okayed by the state, like I've got this little app here that I get from uh, New York State that uh, it's called my New York wallet see there look look see yeah there it goes it's my vaccination card right but it has to go to the st state because they look at your records so this is far better than the uh, than the little cards they one. give you because you can buy those cards online and fill them out yourself and then say I've been uh, I've been vaccinated so it, having something like that is important now in several yeah, states. Well, my, my, my vaccination card has stickers on it. Does it really? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't get any stickers. What are they, cartoon characters? Or? No, 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 <laughs> just 
sticker on where the date is. Yeah, well, mine, they sign it, and then, you know. I, I, right. I, but anyway, this is a much better way of proving that you've been vaccinated. Right, you know? right, right. And right. a lot of states have banned these vaccination passports. Why, I have no idea. You know, uh, they've turned this whole thing into a political issue. It's amazing. Right. Trump gave some kind of speech over the weekend, and he was going about, you know, no vaccinations and and things like that. And I'm going, you know, great. I'm all for you telling a bunch of Republicans don't get vaccinated because they'll the all, thing is, they'll all the die. Thing, you know? Trump is vaccinated. I think he is, yes. Either that or he has the antibodies because he had COVID. Right. And he supposedly had a terrible case of COVID. Oh, really? But it didn't kill him, and they got him out of the hospital fast because they pumped him full of everything known to mankind. Right. In order to kill that thing. He got the kind of help we all wish we could get. Right. Okay. Right, right. Uh, and, uh, but, I mean, it was terrible. It was just terrible. And he, but he, he, I think, says he, well, I'm immune because I have antibodies. Good. And everybody, but here he goes to this Republican convention, the CPAC. And he tells everybody, oh, you know, uh, uh, they, they, they can't force you to do this. You know, it's your right not to do this if you don't want to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Right. Fine. Okay. Uh, but the fact is that what you're doing is you're saying to those people, don't get vaccinated. And it's fine with me because they're all Republicans and some of them will get COVID and some of them will die. Okay. So what do you want to do? You want to ruin the people, the 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 pool of people who will vote for you by right. telling them right. not to get you know you should want them to all have the shots and be healthy so they can vote for you i just wish trump would just go away well he's not going to his ego no. won't let him there's some new books out now a couple of them about the last days of trump in the white house and oh, that, really? that literally his staff considered him insane literally incapable of rational thought uh you know and uh, and a rational hairdo i read this one interview that he did with a reporter a guy named wolf i think who's he said to him that he was uh who was the guy he put on the supreme court i'm trying to remember his name now uh that he was very disappointed in him because he didn't stand up for him in the supreme court i'm sorry you know, he's in the Supreme Court. He's got to he's got to play it as he sees it. You know, that's right. You can't that's be right. disappointed because you gave the eases and I gave this guy a job. You know, like like it's a Trump, Trump, Trump's a fucking idiot. I mean, just well, he's uh, he's a delusional idiot. You yeah, know? I mean, he, and the he, banks are all cl uh, calling in their loans, and there's criminal charges, and let's see what happens. Well, there are no criminal charges. Uh, there's nothing against him. The company, his company, Trump, right. whatever, Trump, 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 uh, has is being charged, I think, with malfeasance of doing business in the state of New York. And, really? Uh, yeah. And, of course, the, the head of the finances and so on has literally been charged with fraud or whatever. So, you know, we got, and, and Trump's company true to their fashion of really standing behind him, uh, m made a big deal out of it and said, uh, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, uh, fire this guy because he's been indicted. He's been with right. the company for 30 years and they're going to fire him because he's been indicted. They don't even stand by him. You know? Well, I like that. I mean, I'm not against not standing by him. I mean, like, <laughs> Why are we still talking about him? I, I have no idea, to be honest with you. you that's, that's the worst part, is we're still talking. He's still relevant. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's irrelevant. Well, he, he's not really relevant, you know. Uh, and, and I, I but, he, but he still, he gets all the, all the, all the juice, you know, so. He, he, he commands, you know, that he gets covered. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So I, I mean, all, when he does something, all the networks cover it. Yeah. All the national, you know, news. They well, they 
I'll tell you, uh, MSNBC doesn't cover him. I mean, he was giving the speech to CPAC, and they said, we'll go back to him if he says anything new. Right, you know, right, or, right, right. Or important or that isn't a lie. Right. You know, I mean, he's been perpetrating this big lie for yeah. the longest time about the election being stolen from him. He still believes that. It was wrested from him, but it wasn't stolen. No, but it, 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 he still believes that he won the election. Uh, yes, um, but we all know that he did. Right. So fuck him. Right. You know. It's it's right there in black and white. Uh, you you know, lost. You know, there's a certain there's a certain dignity in admitting you lost and then moving on. Right. You know, and uh, uh, and step down gracefully. But if I if I if I don't get admitted to the broadcasters Hall of Fame, I'm going to ask for a recount. <laughs> and, oh yeah, you're up for that. Yeah, I and mean, I'm going to say it was a fraud. You know, I, I, I won it, and there was a fraud being played. When, when's the when is the award ceremony? Oh, it's in I don't know November or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's cool. Is this the first time you've been nominated? Is it the first time? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't know how it works. I didn't know how it works, you know. Yeah. Different different Hall of Fames operate differently. Well, I mean, it's like a, it's a contest. Okay. Right. You know, I mean, I've been nominated uh, for the Hall of Fame, which is in itself, I mean, I hate to say it because it sounds so trite, you know, it's an honor just to be nominated, you know. It is. Um, it is. But it's better to win. It's much better to do, win. Do I sound, do I, I, folks, do I sound like I'm being something here wrong? You know. Well, no, it's a happy show. It's better to win. It's better to win. Uh, so Write yeah. that down, boys and girls. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm up against three other people. I'm up against, right. uh, I'm up against, um, um, this is a guy in California. I'm trying to remember his name now. He's a talk show host. I forgot all these things. I, I don't really remember them. Uh, right. But he's a black talk show host who's a right, rabid right winger. And uh, he, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know his name offhand, yeah. but I know exactly who you're talking about. Now there's a there's a there's an audience vote where where people can go and vote for who they want to see put in the Hall of Fame. Oh, really? Yeah. But it only counts as one twenty-fifth. The other twenty-four votes are from the board of nominees. Okay, the nomination board. So, right. So, so you you know you could not have the the audience vote and you know the uh, the regular the you know the vote of the nominees. Now let me ask you this: Can you all get in? No. Only one. Only one. Well, that sucks. Whoever wins. Well, of course, it sucks from this standpoint. You got a Hall of Fame, right? Right. If you're going to have a Hall of Fame, then you just say, hey, by the way, the inductees this year are blah, 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 right. blah, 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 and blah, blah, right. blah. You know, uh, that's what they do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Okay, and I think most other Hall of Fames, they don't hold a contest either. No, they do it the same way. Yeah, they, they, they all get together, the nominating committee, and they say, Okay, I think uh, you know um, Elton John should get a in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, or and so and so. You know, they put about five people in there every year. And they should do the same thing with this. They right. say, "Oh, Alex Bennett's had a lifetime of maybe he should be installed in the Hall of Fame this year." Maybe, That's right. And here are three. Uh, right. Here are four other, five other people that should be. Right. And then they also have. Um, uh, uh, categories which I'm not in I'm in spoken word but they have active uh, and current in other words a, 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 cur the, it, these are people currently are on the air and there are f four categories of that wait a minute wait a minute let me ask you a question the talk show host out of LA is that Larry Elders yeah Elders yeah 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 um, but, why do I know that I have no idea probably because you have no life <laughs> uh, uh, but he, 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 you know, the trouble is that because you have this audience vote, which they say the nominating committee sometimes looks at the audience vote to see, consider 
their right. opinion. Okay. Uh, these, these, there are two people who are on the air currently, Elder and uh, these two guys from Philadelphia who I've never heard of in my life and neither has anybody else. But apparently they've been on the air there for 20 years. Really? Yeah. But anyway, uh, elders can't plug it on his show. Go out and vote for me. Because he's not going to have a show. And the reason he's not going to have a show is he decided to run for governor of California. Oh, is that right? Put his hat in the ring in that uh, recall thing. So if you're running for office, you can't have a radio show. At least you can't have a radio show because then the, the outfit that runs your radio show is it incumbent upon them to give everybody else equal time right, to you. Right, 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 right. Which means right. they'd have to give equal time at this point to over 60 people. Right. Right? So uh, I don't think he can plug it on his show. Uh, the only other one that I think I'm really up against is Sally Jesse Raphael. And I, really? know, I know Sally for years. I mean, I, I, we used to work together. Right. And uh, I, you know, if I wish that anybody win but me, it's her. Right. Okay. okay. In fact, maybe more so than me. Because I like her, and she's had a lifetime of being in this business, and she's very deserving of it. Right. You know, okay. as am I. But, uh, but Absolutely. But I would have to say that uh, I would... Uh, she's older than I am. I've still got a chance to be nominated several more times in the coming years. You That's know? right. She, less so, she's like 86, something like that, 86. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And and I just would like to see her get it before she goes off to her just reward. You know? Right. So, I, I, in a way, I'm pulling for her. It's I know it's strange, but I'm pulling for her. Uh, but if she doesn't win it, then I should. If those other two guys, two people, win it, I think it's wrong. You know, okay. I don't think Larry Elder's contributed anything to this business over the years, and I don't know what these other two guys have ever done. So obviously, their contributions haven't been that huge. Right. You know. Minimal at best. Well, you know, I don't know who they are. They're probably two really nice guys. Maybe they do deserve it. I don't know. But where they came from, I have no idea. I expected there would be two of three other people there that I had heard of. Right, okay. right, right, right. But I went, Elder, yeah, uh-huh, Sally Jesse, uh-huh. These guys, who are they? Right. Where did they come from? And then I've asked everybody, where are they, who are they? And nobody seems to know. You can't Google them? Oh, I've Googled them. They've been on for 20 years at WMR in, uh, in Philadelphia. Which I think, you know, is a long period of time, but I don't know if that qualifies you for the uh, Hall of Fame. Right. But, but getting back to what I was saying is that it really should be for a lifetime of work. Right. And, and I don't think there's a posthumous category. I don't believe, I didn't see, there was, they didn't say they were putting anybody in posthumously. But there well, were did a lot they of, send you a notification? Yeah, they sent me a letter, yeah. Uh, notifying me that I and I got a call the night before from one of the members of the board, the nomination board, who right. said, "Here, I'm going to send you this letter because they told me to send you the letter. Uh, don't mention it to anybody till the twelfth that you've been nominated for, you know, right? The award, the uh, induction into the Hall of Fame. But I just think it's the kind of thing you don't hold a contest. What you do is you get together and you decide this year, Sally Jesse Raphael is going to be the." the recipient or Alex Bennett's going to be the recipient but you don't sit around going and these are the four people five four people who are up for it now everybody vote yeah yeah it, it, I agree yeah. with you if you get nominated that should mean you're in yeah yeah but I mean if, <clears throat> if I uh, don't you know get it I, I you know I'm not going to be disappointed I'll be disappointed if it were Larry Elder these two guys in Philadelphia, but if it was Sally Jesse, I'd be happy for her. You know. Well, well. You know, she she was an okay lady when I knew her. And, right, uh, right, right. I'm sure she continued to be okay. Yeah. But I became good friends with. Well, there was a guy who was a. He actually was the doorman at WMCA when I was when I was starting out uh, here in New York, 
and uh, he uh, he became her producer. And then I got to meet him again at uh, uh, at, at uh, Sirius XM, where he started working, putting together the Doctor Channel and so on, and, right. and uh, Maurice Tunick. And uh, he worked with her producing that show for years, the TV show. And um, what does a producer actually do? He does a lot, really. If you're a real producer, if you're an executive producer, you don't do anything. It's an honorary credit. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, some executive producers do take hold of the situation, and, you know, but but right. very very seldom. Anyway, so um, uh, uh, he uh, he and he never spoke badly about her. You know, we always talked very positively about her. Right. So you know, I mean, she. I've always liked her. Always liked her. And uh, am I being magnanimous by saying I hope she wins? Deep down, I hope I win. But you of course, know. Yeah, of course, you should hope you win. But if if it isn't me, then it better be her. You know? Wow. I wouldn't. I would. I would. I would be. If I got nominated for something like that, I would be confident I was in. Well, I, look, I, you know. But I, that's just setting yourself up to be well, disappointed. Well, there are two parts to this. You know, number one, yeah, I deserve it. I've I've had a lifetime in this business. I've right. contributed to it. I've changed it by doing right. certain things that other people then did. Right. Okay, so I, I'm, I, you know, I changed the structure of morning shows across the entire country by having comics on. Nobody did that before I did it. And an audience. Yeah. I, I forget, forgot to mention on my biography that I had a studio audience. But right. forget about that. That was a function of having comics on because then they had somebody to play to. Okay. Right. Right. But the fact was... That every other show in America started book them booking comics. They nobody booked comics before I did, you know. Right. So right. I, I changed the business that way. I changed the business years ago when I was the first guy to start interviewing rock artists. Oh really? Yeah. When I would call up record companies and say I would like your rock artist, this rock artist, or that. Do you have any rock artists we can have on? They went, you want to interview one of our rock artists? Because right. nobody was doing it. Really? You know? Yeah. So I mean, I think I have changed the business okay. you know, through my through my actions. Uh, I don't think Larry Elder has, and I right. I've never heard of these other two guys. Neither are they. Uh, right. Sally was a woman working in this profession early on, so for that, I think she gets some points. You know. But I mean, you're right about the comics and the, and, the, and the, doing the radio because when you would do a gig in any city. You'd have to do their morning talk That's show. That's correct. But, the, but before I started doing it, they wouldn't even book you on that show. Right, right. And sometimes you get on the, like, the um, Good Morning, I don't know, Amherst. The, it, one of the multitudes of morning zoos. Right. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. It's the morning zoo. Hey, we're having fun. Honk, honk. You know, sound effects. Yeah, but so. I, I, I mean... Your, your show was unique. It was unique in many, you know, yeah. the live audience, but the anyway, back and forth. I, 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 looking back on a lifetime of work, I didn't just do the common things everybody else was doing. I always tried to bend the medium, change it, move it in different right. directions and things like that. And uh, because of that, uh, I think, you know, I deserve it. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even denying that I don't deserve it, but... Am I as well known as Sally Jesse? Not really. Am I as well known maybe as Larry Elder because he's currently on the air? I don't know. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people are very fond, have very fond memories of Alex Bennett in New York, very fond memories of Alex Bennett in San Francisco. But that's oh, yeah. Per that's pretty much it. You know? So, well, those are some pretty big markets, well, San Francisco and in New York. Yeah, but I never went syndicated. I never got all over the country. Right. And then everybody would have known who I was. Right. You know, I was a local radio star. Right. And there was nothing wrong with that. But in no. those days, most people were local radio stars, and syndication was something new. And now right. it's the only thing you want. You know, you want to be right. syndicated. So, you know, and so uh, who knows? Hopefully, Did you have the opportunity to be syndicated? Yes. 
But I, and, you, and you said no? I, well, it went along with the job I had to take, and then I would have had to leave San Francisco, and I felt guilty about that, walking out okay. of the contract. But uh, I would have worked for the guy who made uh, Howard Stern a star. Oh, really? And he would have put me out across the country, syndicated. Right. But I didn't take it. So, what the hell? You know, what a was, it the show, was it the show you were doing in San Francisco that they no. were going to syndicate? No. No, I had to go to Washington, D.C. to do it. Oh, i got to turn this off. That's my, uh, that's my uh, the phone ringing. I, well, anyway, i got to go. We've run out yeah, of time. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's my business manager telling me i got to go. Uh, Hi. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Once again, thank Steve you, Alex. Kravitz. We'll talk again next week. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Kravitz. Bye, Stephen. Bye.